Welcome back everybody and uh, today we're going to be doing a quick look at the latest update which is uh, 0 0.14 uh, Can't wait for this update to come out and it's finally here Getting your launcher right now and uh, update and you will be able to see all the awesomeness Head over to the starmade.org slash news page to read the full uh, patch notes yourself but we're going to take a little look through this so for everybody in the chat i will be answering and for the benefit of youtube we'll read out some of those questions at the end and whatnot which would be quite fun so we're going to take a little bit of time and go over the uh thing so welcome to the show we're just doing the star made official news update we're going to be going through the star made 0.14 release we're doing this live on twitch but it will be going out on youtube uh probably later on tonight so um it is pretty late but this is a big update, so that's the way it's going down. Um, I'm going to go through this now, and I'm going to try to read this out as best I can. If I skip over anything or get it wrong, like I say, the update, the uh, link will be in the description for you guys on YouTube. Um, everybody else at StarMade.org official website, click on the news tab. You're done. So, let's get on to the patch notes. Uh, there is currently a hotfix out, so uh, it's actually 141 currently. Uh, so here we go Finally the new update is in release state there might still be some bugs and this is a huge update with mostly core design upgrades There are so many, only so many testers if you have problems starting Please try to change your settings and send in a report especially shadow texture resolution multi sampling anti-aliasing and normal mapping And now we get to go into the new features I'm, I'm just really excited for everybody to finally start playing with all this stuff because we've been building a lot of stuff recently and nobody can play on it so finally we get to release some of our new stuff to the communities so here we are graphic effects shadows what started out as a little one day experiment turned into one of the best looking graphical upgrades of the update due to limitations in the size of shadow map textures long range shadows need a lot more parts and are harder to implement StarMade is using cascade and shadow, shadow maps, which is a uh, technique to combine shadow textures rendered from multiple distances to archive the best quality versus distance. And we've got a couple of screenshots to look through. Um, I've provided this little one here, and you can't blow it up, so we're going to see you're off, barebone, simple, and ultra. Um, I find taking screenshots in ultra is just beautiful. Um, off, obviously, if you're working on something massive is going to give you better FPS but it's the same with anything really you reduce the settings for more FPS but if you want it to be a bit more bells and whistles there you go so let's take a look at some of these screenshots here uh, as you can see we've got a pretty cool example of some shadows <laughs> nice shadows in the bottom there um, if I just come back to the page and just click on this one this shows it a little bit more as well um, this is a really nice picture, like I say, just shows the whole planet, a few shadows here and there, and they move, trace along as the planet rotates, which gives you a day-night cycle. It also allows for a uh, geostationary orbits and such, so you can build moons off the side, it's brilliant. Anyway, let's get back to the patch notes. So then, um, thanks for the mention and uh, everyone in the fleet that helped me out with collecting the pictures because I did get a couple of them from other members. Uh, here we are, normal mapping, bump mapping. Normal mapping is a standard graphic effect used in most modern games. The milestone of that feature is less implementation but the work of Tom Kupu for creating the normal maps for each texture. What this does is it uses your graphics card to create 3D textures based on a, an additional texture layer which can be generated from that layer. And it is very tricky to get it just right, but you can get away with some really nice material looking effects, especially when the rays trace across them. Um, here's some pictures, like I say, showing those textures in a bit more detail. Like you can see that it's just, when the light comes across, you get little shadows and pits in the uh, texture, it's really nice. Um, if I just go back and look at the next one, as you can see here, you've got different textures. It shines on certain materials and it doesn't on others. It's really nice. So, what have we got here? We got the normal maps. Oh yeah, this is the little image I produced. Um, it's the same screenshot, but I had normal maps on and normal maps off. And as you can see, this is quite a flat texture with the same lighting down it across. It's the same lighting, you know, from the top to bottom. If you look at this one on the other side, 
you can see this one's got like it you can you can see it's raised there's extra lighting applied along the, the texture and it gives this sort of 3d raised effect as well by pulling and pushing by warping the texture effectively as your perspective moves giving it that 3d effect and that's you know it's a standard thing in most games but something you have to uh, modify many games to get at something like that so here we are with a lighting model update and fixes not only was the lighting model upgraded to pre-calculate the lighting a lot faster but also the shadows were upgraded to better represent darker areas and distinct better between lighting from block light sources and lighting from outside additionally Stomage switched to per pixel lighting to make lighting look a lot better furthermore most of the lighting bugs resulted from angled shapes have been fixed there are still some lighting errors resulting from some incorrect normals I'll try to fix those in coming updates. So, uh, like I say, this is just a picture of a cave that is auto-generated underground, a little bit of lava. The lava's lighting up the whole room there. It's quite nice. <clears throat> so here we have procedural backgrounds. Procedural backgrounds are a big thing for me. I mean, it really makes the universe come to life. If you're going around the universe, you get a really good idea that it's a big, expansive place and uh, it just feels like you're traveling further because of the way that the uh, background's changing and some of them are really moody as well you can get the deep purples dark reds light blues um, and uh, it makes does make it feel like you're up on that sort of even line level to be honest so since the static skybox was getting boring new procedurally generated backgrounds have been implemented they are unique to each star system, which is 16 by 16 by 16 sectors, and persistent in the universe. This will also help players to recognize familiar territory. So that means you should be able to get the same backgrounds per location. That's, that's interesting. I'd like to check that out. So now, on to the textures. One of the biggest upgrades is a complete new look for StarMade. Uh, Tom Kupu created three all-new texture packs for StarMade. You can now choose between cartoon, realistic, and pixel. You can still switch back to the old texture, old style, but please keep in mind that additional blocks might have a different art style in that texture pack. Furthermore, you can now choose higher resolution texture packs if they exist for a texture pack. Currently, cartoon and realistic support 128 and 256, I believe. I know realistic does the support the 256. So if your graphics card is a high-end card, you should have no trouble running that. Obviously, if you're worried about it, you can still run the old settings. They're still all there. Um, and this is opening the door as well with the option in the launcher for modders, texture pack creators, who are wishing to create their own texture packs. You can now just have it as an extra option, and it won't ever affect anything moving forward. So a very easy install process. Just unzip it, and it's in the right place. So there you go. So we're going to take a look, this is the uh, pixel texture pack, as you can see here we've got a few of the uh, weapons blocks, okay, and a few of the other systems, and then this is the uh, obviously the terrestrial planet, so, so that's, that's the pixel, I'm a big fan of the pixel because it's a 64-bit texture pack which runs quite well on the, the uh, lower performance systems, but also uh, something interesting actually which we can't show here is the whole blocks are literally the color you know there's no it, so it's really good if you want a solid color design you know it's uh, good for the look anyway i think uh moving on down to the cartoon texture pack so the cartoon texture pack this one again has got quite a snazzy feel to it uh like i say it's a it's the cartoon texture pack you know I think it was popularized, it seems familiar, I don't know if the Thunderdome maybe used something like this last year, or an earlier version of it perhaps, but whatever the case, um, it's quite a nice texture pack, I do like it. So, coming back off that one, and then on to one of the current favourites, which is the realistic texture pack, mainly because it goes up to the 256, it had the bump mapping first, and uh, Everyone just wanted to try out all the new features, so as you can see, we've got this like leaf effect on the leaves, a grass effect on the grass, you know. I'm a big fan of the uh, realistic texture pack. It's a big step forward if you're playing with all the options on and you've got a nice PC. It really does make your old ships look really good. And even if you just log in just to check out what your old builds look like now, if you've got a nice PC, it's really worth just getting in, 
Hit F6, take a few screenshots. It's worth it. So, so anyway, we're going to move on down, and uh, looks like we got some more uh, texture pack comparison uh, kind of screenshots. So it looks like we've got a little uh, computer console here, and we've got the pixel texture pack. As you can see, we've got that. Like I was saying, it's just a solid color on the holes, which is really nice. The realistic, which has that sort of tiled effect on the hardened blocks. And then the cartoon, which has these strange hexagon style designs, which is pretty cool. And I know it's not really a hexagon, or maybe it is, but you know that geometric shapes, guys. <laughs> so uh, let's just come down here. <clears throat> and and uh, just quickly, people in the chat saying this game's looking a lot more polished with the high risk texture pups and bump mapping. I have to agree. Uh, when you're going to look at some of the other voxel games of the, of the moment, uh, you do have to mod quite considerably to get that kind of level of effect. So to have it supported in game and allow anybody to pretty much to do a better job if they think they want to. I mean, I, I myself think Kibbe's doing an outstanding job and uh, he's given me a few pointers here and there. And yeah, he's definitely a good man to have in charge. So of the all, all the textures. So new skin files. A new format for skins has been implemented as skins now include multiple textures. There's more on that in this next section. So then, Dave. We've met Dave before and he's been featured in a few videos by now as uh, many of the uh, YouTubers are using the dev and pre-builds to film. Uh, one of the biggest changes with this is the animations and obviously the UV map for his default skin. You can create templates for your own custom skin in the StarMade slash data slash skinning resources folder. It didn't just replace the system one to one, a whole new system to have all kinds of animations and models has been developed and implemented. There's more on that in the new animation system. All new models and accessories have an emission map additionally to the standard texture. That map makes the part of the texture glow even in shadows. So we can give you a few examples of that. <clears throat> As you can see here, his back, bottom of the gun, and the side of the helmet are all in shadow. But uh, you know, you can see it's glowing still because of that emissive texture. Again, you can see the back there glowing in the shadow. You can also see the shape of the uh, of uh, Dave. The shape of Dave is not, you know, he's not a pool noodle, and he's not a big square Minecraft dude. So he's kind of bendy and uh, it's quite limber I think. <laughs> so moving on to the helmet we have a new item. Uh, simply put it in your hotbar and click the mouse uh, when activated and you will put your helmet on as demonstrated just here. Um, <laughs> that's quite a big <laughs> white screen. Sorry about that guys. Um, so the helmet is currently decorative so we haven't got an implementation of air and all that business but it will serve gameplay functions later. You can put on your helmet at will, and it can even customize the helmet texture, as it's now part of the new skin format. For example, I've seen people with transparent helmets, so they look like a big glass helmet, you know, and I've seen people with, uh, let's see, yeah, sunglasses, that was really cool. <laughs> so, moving on. The fabricator and all new tools implemented. At the moment, the fabricator will be equipped automatically when placing and removing blocks in astronaut mode uh, and can be seen on the armor of the players or in third person mode. Removing has been replaced with a time based personal salvage beam of the fabricator for balance reasons. Upgrades to this tool are planned. So, anybody that's wondering, is it always going to be one block with two range? Probably not. So, we could just stick that under soon. <laughs> Uh, new animation and model system. Part of the reason this upgrade took a little longer was the creation of abstract animation and model interface. This interface will add new models without having to do a single line of programming code. This can now be defined in XML configuration files. This will also help with modding as new models can be added without having to modify the game code. So you've basically got an API for custom animations and models right there. So, you know, when people ask about modding, it's it's there it's in mind you can see this right here um, that's going to be something really impressive and I'd I can't wait to see because we've got a lot of technical people in the community and 
they're going to jump all over that, you know. <laughs> so uh, even though the animations that we're getting already are great, um, it's always interesting to see with what communities come up with. So, uh, right then, moving on, we have some interesting stuff. Controls, and joystick, and gamepad support was implemented to support every kind of joystick and gamepad. Input axis can be defined and edited. Their sensitivity as well as the option to invert can be customized individually. So if you want to get a joystick out, that works. I myself tried out the Xbox 360 controller. It's actually a lot of fun. Uh, I got a little USB one cheap, uh, just second hand, just to try it out. And uh, yeah, it works. <laughs> like I say, you can't really say much more than that. I mean, there's a few things, but, uh, you know, give it a bit of time and we'll be able to, because uh, it's sort of like, you know, certain things you need to work it out exactly how to get the perfect setup. But you can save them and share them. So maybe someone's going to have the perfect one and share it. And then everyone will just use that one. Um, I believe that's how it works anyway. Uh, right, so moving on. UI fixes. A lot of fixes have been made to make the GUI more easy to use. We are still planning a complete overhaul, so I held back on some redesigns to not have to do twice the work. One major change is the addition of sliders in various parts to make tedious settings a lot more convenient. Uh, more obviously, in the advanced build mode, hold control, and there you have your advanced build mode options. You've got your sliders for the X, Y's and Z's, <clears throat> and obviously for all of your buying items and things, you've got your sliders in there, which is very nice. The cockpit docking beam. <laughs> a minor change but often requested one is that the docking beam will now originate from the cockpit. This will help especially larger ships in the docking procedure. So we've been testing that out. We've managed to dock the 801 by 801 toroid <laughs> um, to uh, a planet with no problems. So uh, there will be no excuses for not being able to dock anymore. So, log panel. This new panel, activated from the main game menu or by pressing F1, will help you keep track of every message in the game. You can apply filters, so it's a lot more comfortable to read. It also makes chatting privately to other players a lot easier. Just select a player from the drop-down. As long as the panel is open, pressing Enter will automatically prepare a private message to that player. So have a little play around with that. It's going to make that a little bit easier. Of course, slash PM and then the three first characters of their name and then hit tab may autofill but still you know that's just another feature you want to try that as well and slash and then use tab to autofill commands and player names although I might be getting ahead of the patch notes so I'm going to just carry on <laughs> and uh, trust the ordering here so additional blocks and shapes the basic block format has been changed to allow 32 styles of blocks the migration to the, of the old format to the new will be done on the fly so there are no version compatibility issues. The only downside is that segments, chunks, will load a little slower one single time. Once they are loaded and saved in a new format, they will have no downside at all. Please make sure either way you have all your important data backed up. Uh, all corners, all different rotations of corner blocks are finally usable. Uh, the penta block, a uh, new style block with seven sides, basically a cube with one corner chopped off. Uh, tetra, the part that is missing, so the bit that is chopped off the corner, so those two. Uh, gravity orientations, gravity can now be oriented and used in a six direction, that means you can walk on walls, the ceiling, or use gravity elevators. This has been demonstrated uh, many times on quite a few ships, notably the Naviri recently we did in the... Uh, uh, a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks back, by Ryben. So there you have it. Uh, flower orientations. Flower and other sprite style blocks can now be oriented to all sides, uh, which means your bio labs can get a little bit more interesting and a little bit prettier if that's uh, a sort of thing you incorporate into your ship design. Uh, in universe, uh, we're going to move on to now. So advanced shops. For the new AI, there is now a slightly different type of shop that will spawn an NPC. Those shops will spawn in 222 on new universes and can always be found in not yet explored parts of the universe. The lower probability is normal shops. To find them in navigation, look at the NPC indicator rather than the shop. So, in other words, you're going to start seeing a, a Dave sort of character running around and you can go up to him and uh, buy NPCs and so on. But we're going to get on to that. So, Planet rotation versus system rotation. Since rotating a cube on a grid had too many logical problems, which the end, the end result 
uh, in the end resulted in endless bugs like teleportation, etc. And the only real game was to have a day-night cycle on planets. The rotation has been moved from starred systems to individual planets. Everything in a planet sector will be rotating. There is still a minor issue that uh, objects build over the sector borders uh, and then have no collision. And that's caused a lot of potential for lags and bugs. I'll try to make it solid again in the future. The main gain from using that system is uh, a lot of problems, lags, warps, unwanted orientation changes resulting from your system rotation are now a thing of the past, which makes travelling a lot easier. You'll notice when you enter orbit of a planet, you'll hit C to re-level to the planet. And then when you leave, you'll break out of that orbit. So, uh, yeah, that's that. Go and have a play. It's pretty cool. Uh, faction. So, personal enemies. A new option has been added for factions to have personal enemies. This also setting your faction to declare war on hostile action won't set your faction to attack all neutrals if attacked by a neutral. It will now add that player to the personal enemies of the faction. So that's going to solve a lot of unwanted war decks and so on, I think. It's going to be a great little addition. So remember that. Declare war on hostile action. Now, if some neutral comes along, he just goes on personal enemies list. Okay, so uh, that's going to save a bit of griefing, I guess. Uh, the NPC and AI section now. The NPC system. With the new NPC system, a new logic system behind it was implemented. The NPC system is made to have all kinds of monsters, people, critters, etc. with an artificial intelligence populate the star-made universe in the future. For now, only humanoid NPCs are spawned in the game, but that will change very soon. Uh, pathfinding. One major part of, the, uh, part of the implementation of the character AI was the addition of an efficient block-based pathfinding algorithm. It, because of the requirements, requirements for such an algorithm were such that the uh, details of movement could change, moving in gravity or without, different model scale, etc. I took a lot of time to design... Of course, I'm paraphrasing Schema right now. I'm trying to channel him <laughs> as best I can. So, I took a lot of time to design a modular system that can be customised for any requirement. The pathfinding is fully threaded and will therefore work in the background while the game can still run without lag. I chose to use a modified A-star algorithm which builds the path based on heuristics on the cost to move to a position. This way, implementing penalties for jumping or the future moving on, or in the future, moving on bad terrain uh, is possible. NPC crew. You can now hire your own AI controlled crew. This is currently only possible at advanced shops when talking. Press R to, uh, uh, to the shop NPC. Upon buying an NPC, he'll be in your current crew. You can then control that NPC by holding down the control button. The options to control the AI will be on the left of the screen. You can also modify its name and control it from the AI panel, which is now always accessible. Your group can have five NPCs at max. It doesn't mean you only get four NPCs total. You can place them on your ship and dismiss them from your command to get more NPCs. They will still be waiting for you, wherever you've left them. Please keep in mind there's still a few hiccups with the NPCs. Uh, the system at the moment is they need to have an affinity to a structure. The NPC will behave relative to that structure. To change the affinity, the best way is to make the NPC follow you and then order it to a point on the object that you want the NPC to belong to. Without ordering it to move to the new object, the, the NPC will remain in the last affinity it belonged to. AG space, I'm guessing. So, AI difficulty. You can now also change the single player difficulty in the login screen. This will only affect single player. Lure interface. S Starmade is now support for scripting language Lure. For now, the interface is only used officially for conversation system, but will be expanded into other parts. This especially will help with modders to make changes to the program without having to dive into the code and essentially create a custom build. Conversation system. Conversation system is fully based on Lua and gives a taste of what is to come. The, crisp, uh, the, the crisps. The scripts are located in data slash scripts if you want to experiment. So take a copy, have a little modify and see what you can come up with. The conversations are fully networked so when an admin modifies them the text and objects uh, options are transferred to the clients without them needing the scripts. Also, all decisions are executed on the server for maximum security. Please be careful when modifying the scripts as there's no real debugging yet and script errors may result in a server crash. 
Damn, that's some patch notes. So, moving on to plans. Ansolio is a script language. Doing complex operations can be very expensive. That's why I'm trying to provide several interfaces to make Java do most of the work. One plan is, for example, to create an interface for the structure generation. Admins can then place generation scripts for space stations, even by using a random generator in the game, leading to space stations being created from that script. This will take care of the problem that space stations always look the same. Tools. GIF recording. Players can now, exactly like screenshots, create GIFs in-game. Press the break button to start recording and press it again to finish. Size and frame rate of the GIF can be customized in the settings.cfg file. Now, just a note, okay, if you can't find your break or pause key, that's what it, it may be, break or pause. It's sometimes um, if you've got a laptop under a function key, uh, so you might have to check that out for your particular PC if you can't find that, but it is on there somewhere. <laughs> or it should be. So orbital cam, to make it even easier to record ships, an orbital camera has been activated by holding the backslash. Tilde, depending on the layout. A tilde is a little wavy line, guys. Um, it can be assigned, reassigned in the options. Uh, the camera will fly around the current position of the player and the mouse wheel can be used to zoom. Okay. Do, 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 do. Uh, just quickly. We've got one zero one one zero zero one zero one one saying he has a feeling the update took a while to come out due to the lengthy process of writing the patch notes. You know, yeah, maybe, <laughs> but there has been a lot of uh, headway made. So let's move on to the optimization and redesign section. Most of the work of the update went into finding the weak points of the core and redesigning those to be more scalable, less error prone, and easier to expand upon. Here are some examples of not all of core changes. More can be found in the change log. So we redesigned the topology of segments on a higher level, chunks. One problem with the old version was empty segments took away performance on multiple levels. Memory consumption, of course, not as much as filled ones. Organization for, opera for operations on non-empty segments. Uh, the system still had to iterate over empty as well as non-empty segments and physics. Those checks between regions of segments were expansive and caused lots of lag, even when the two objects weren't touching. The redesign was implementing at the top level from a two-layer region map to array. It was designed into a region 2 octree structure uh, with a very small memory footprint. So each segment now takes no memory at all. Segments in an area can be iterated, skipping empty regions naturally. Network segment signature requesting. Uh, to minimize unnecessary uh, client requests and performance spent on finding out what to request, the logical step was at first to request a bitmap of a region, so each client knows with minimal effort which segments have to be requested and which are surely empty. The uh, current system works great and improves loading times for structures by a lot. Uh, that, coupled with a lot of other optimizations, as well as the new Octree topology, brings down loading times of examples from over 3 minutes to under 20 seconds. Controller structure. Uh, loading what blocks are connected to each other is a lot of work and data. Modular modularizing the uh, system cuts the memory usage more than in half and speeds up processing. Uh, we've got vertex buffer batches. Yeah, you, what do you know about vertex butter batches? For some graphics cards, using as many small vertex buffer objects was a bottleneck. The new system combines those into bigger buffers. The size can be customized in the options as its perfect setting directly depends on the graphics card driver, so you may have to try different settings for the best performance. So tweak it, that's the VBO guys, tweak it. I mean, I, I, I started using other Macs, you know, because I thought, oh, I've got a nice graphics card, I'll use the Macs. But I actually find it's better on 8 to 16 meg. Um, obviously, there have been some changes, so we'll have to see. Oh, I have to keep tweaking it. Okay, so uh, now the work on the next update can, can begins. Uh, the game will be update, updated more frequently from now on, since most of the coming things won't have core changes. Thanks for playing, Schema. So I just want to add that thank you very, very much, Schema, for all your hard work over the last four months, so by my count. I mean, obviously, you've been working on it for years, but uh, we've all been waiting with bated breath for this update, and we're just all so happy that it's here. Um, can't wait to have it on our main server. That, I know that one for sure. So um, here is the full change log. 
and I'm not going to read all damn schema I'm not going to read all 327 because I'm going to leave that for all you true believers who want to go and find out every little bit of detail everything look at that okay that's called effort so I just got to thank schema again and um, pretty much that's everything so I'm just going to go into the chat and just see if we can catch up here let's see uh, Tamina never sleeps it's partially true um, let's see unlike the Minecraft guy he's actually alive yeah you could say that he, yeah because he's kind of bendy <laughs> uh, wait until he can suffocate from taking his helmet off uh, hmm yeah, maybe so let's see what else we've got then uh, I haven't been able to find a sweet spot yet. Hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to read it back in three hours. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know. See, that's the thing. If I actually did read out all those changes, uh, I'd I'll probably be here for quite some time. So I'm going to leave that to all you hardcore uh, players. And uh, don't forget to comment bacon uh, when you finish reading all of those patch notes. Just to let us know that you've actually finished reading all of those patch notes. And I'll know because uh, you had to watch either all of this stream or the whole of the YouTube video uh, <laughs> to figure that part out. I will also be putting the audio for this up on SoundCloud. Uh, the address for that is going to be changing soon so I can't put a link up for you. But there will be posts in Mushroom Fleet. So um, I'm Tamino Sama. Thanks for joining me. And I'm going to be leaving you now. So until next time, I will be bringing you more news. And thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.